Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to review sort of like a starter laptop that was sent to me by a company, Link Plus. Now, I dealt with their products before in the past. I reviewed at least one of their webcams that actually did fairly well. So they said they wanted to send me this laptop. It's uh, rather on the low end of cost. Like I said, sort of like a starter laptop. Right now, I think it's going for about $170 on Amazon. Uh, I'll put the ad up on the screen here. And also, you'll find the link down in the, in the notes below. But I'm going to open this up, take a look at it, see what kind of setup I need to do on it. I'll connect it up so I can capture its screen. It does support an external HDMI. You do need a mini HDMI to standard HDMI, which is a cable that I happen to have. Not micro. This is mini. The micro is meant for, like, cameras. Anyway, we'll open this up, got my knife, and we'll see what's in it. I have not opened this up yet, so it's going to be a surprise to me just as well as to you. What do we got in here? Hey, there is a box in the bottom. Let me pull that out. Let's take a look at the laptop first. It comes with a nice instruction inside of a plastic bag. I'll take a look at that in a few minutes. Wow, it's a, it's a beautiful white color. It's supposed to be 14 inches. Wow, it's pretty handsome, actually. In terms of storage, it's supposed to have a 128 gigabyte uh, SSD, I think, probably an M2. But it also has the option, oh, that's beautiful, look at that. It's, it looks like it has the option, or it said it had the option, it looks like this is where it goes, where you can put a two and a half inch standard SATA SSD as well to expand the storage. Okay, I don't know if you could easily change the M2 or not. I'm sure there's a way to do that, but it may not be trivial to do, and that's not going to be something I'll cover today. Uh, but I will probably open this up and take a look in there and see what it has. But let me uh, take a look. It's got a, a nice screen to it. Let me see, does it have a tear? Yeah, it looks like it might have a tear. So let's see what that, uh, what that looks like. There we go. Nice screen protector on it. Some people may want to leave that. Let's see, in terms of ports, let me switch to the overhead camera. Oh, it looks really good against a black background, that's for sure, huh? Let's see what it's got here. It's got, looks like a standard uh, USB. It has a, a network connection. Yeah, a standard RJ45 network connection. You've just got to sort of pop that out a little bit. It's got, uh, looks like a second USB, headphones, a micro SD card reader on this side here. Let's see what's on the other side here. I'll pop that, pop that back in for now. And then we got over here 3.0 SD. And here's a power connector, it looks like, that'll go into here. And of course, for the HDMI, the mini HDMI, there's that. Okay, and I'll be able to connect that up and see it on the screen and capture it. Now, there were some complaints, but I'll double check and see if it bothers me about how this is really a UK keyboard. It's not US based. Just a quick look at it. I don't necessarily see any issue with it. It has a Celeron processor in it. Now, it's supposed to come with Windows in S mode. So it's Windows Home in S mode. And uh, there is a way to automatically switch that over to Windows for Home. And I'll put the link down in the notes below to show that, and I'll pop it up on the screen here as well so that you can see what, uh, what the link looks like. So if you go there, it's a Microsoft website that tells you how to switch it from the S mode, which some people call secure mode, other people call starter mode or simple mode. It sort of restricts you because you can only utilize apps that you've downloaded from the Microsoft Store. You can't just load anything you want on it when it's in S mode. So we'll see how that works out. I'm going to first open up what's in the box here, the rest of the box. Push this off to the side. Let's see what we got here. And the only thing that's in this box is a power adapter. Now, it's always my habit to go through and charge anything before I turn it on. So what I'll do is I'll connect up. Well, it's pretty good. It's got about a five-foot uh, wire on it, which is pretty good. So I think that's pretty good in terms of length. I can reach way over to my to my outlet, the standard outlet, and we'll plug this in and see what we get. I'll plug the power in, and a little red light comes on. So I guess when that turns green or turns off, we're all charged. 
So I'll just let it rest here. Pop the thing back on in a couple of minutes. Okay, it looks like it's fully charged now. It took about three hours for this to turn into a green light here, which is the indicator that it's fully charged. Let me hook it up, connect the network cable over to this little snap out open network connector you have to use here. It clicks in place. And then we'll power this thing on and see what we get. It says hold down for about two seconds to power on button, which looks like it's over here. See what we get. Looks like it's got a camera here. I see something coming up on the screen. It actually went on the screen here. So let me show you that. It came up on both the laptop and the screen. There's the laptop. Just a moment. And it says the same thing on the screen here. Hi there, I'm Cortana. So Cortana automatically came on. So here we go. It's uh, going through its setup. I'll say yes. It defaults to the United Kingdom, which I understand the keyboard is a UK keyboard. It is very important that you leave this as United Kingdom keyboard. You cannot physically change the keys. And if you don't do this, the special characters will not map out at all. In a follow-up video, I'll show you how to correct this if you make a mistake and say US keyboard like I did the first time. I don't want a second keyboard. Standard Windows startup. So I'll zoom ahead a little bit. Looks like a Windows 10 license agreement. Let me scroll down. Then I'll accept that. Okay, an important thing to note, this is a British keyboard, as I mentioned earlier. And the particular problem is that where the at sign is on the British keyboard, as you can see, is over here on top of the comma. But the American one is Shift 2. If you look around, however, you'll see many more differences in the special characters around this keyboard. Okay, I've created the Microsoft account that they require, since this is going to be the equivalent of Windows Home, especially after I convert it from the Windows in S mode to full Windows Home. Okay, we're on to the next step, which is good. Get rid of this stuff. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to decline it. I do not want one drive. I will decline that. Going through all their marketing blurbs at this point. Okay, it's finished initializing at this point. Let me do the final steps here and uh, say, yeah, let it be discoverable on my local network. And now we're up and running. We have Windows 10 equivalently running here. It's somewhat limited from what I understand. So, I mean, I see all the options to it. Let's see, what does this PC say? We have 93 gigabytes free of 115 gigabytes. So it's a regular Windows 10 laptop at this point. If I go to control panel, what do I get? It doesn't pop swiftly, but everything does pop up. So I think it's usable for an office PC or a school PC. Definitely something to consider as a starter for a student, maybe in high school or even middle school these days, you never know. I like to have large icons. Let me take a look at the task manager, see what kind of performance it's showing. It's running at 2.3 gigahertz, only a total of four gigabytes of memory. I do not believe you can easily upgrade that. Plenty of disk. What I'll also do in the follow-up video is I will add in an SD card to this. So as you may recall from the initial introduction, on the back of this, we can put another solid state drive here. There's a little panel right here, it looks like. You remove these two screws and this thing comes off. It says SD right here. So I'll go ahead and upgrade it by adding at least a 500 gig in there. And we'll, we'll see how that looks once we've done that. I think it's something worth looking at if you're looking for uh, an inexpensive starter PC for somebody. I think this uh, may cut the bill. Be on the lookout for the follow-up to this because I think it's worthwhile doing. And we'll see how it performs and how it upgrades, at least in terms of hard disk space, or in this case, solid state disk space. Thanks for watching.